Hello. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Wherever you are, this is your host for Talk Architecture Podcast, the second episode on what architecture school did not teach you. I left there in the last episode that manual drawing skills are important. Not just manual drawing skills per se, but the whole system of drawing manually, the whole eye and hand coordination, the whole sense and sensibilities of doing manual drawings, as opposed to doing using a mouse or a stylus. A stylus is better, but it's still a pinpoint thing rather than um, you, you'd want to be like sketching like a painter using big bold pencils. You'd want to just sketch with the whole arm rather than the fingers or the hand. And there is this thing called reflection or just musing or just, you know, like um, trusting your in- instincts. Uh, a bit like creative expressions. Um, when you free write or free draw, uh, at the beginning, uh, when you start designing or even think about the project, that interesting sketches that we have seen a lot from past architectural genius sis. Uh, you know, we have seen some, some, shall we say, sketches, early sketches that are just have a feel of the lay of the land or have a feel of the whole idea of the space, of the site, that free writing, free mode, of drawing, free thinking, free feeling it rather than thinking of it. That needs to be done. So, I mean, does everyone have that skill? That is one skill to develop. Another skill is manually drawing the plans, sections and elevations to scale, measured using a scale ruler or, you you know, a graph paper or something to measure because scale and proportion comes out of a manual drawing better than from uh, assuming from um, dimensions, assuming from um, materials or supplies, equipments. You can rationalize it later with the uh, products or manufactured elements when you design the assembly or disassembly. You can you can put it, you can rationalize the uh, dimensions perfectly later. But at the beginning, the scale and proportions is based on the human body, and the human body is varied and the human sense, the well-being of the human being. Um, it's different than just one meter, two meter, three meters. It's, it's not exactly like that. But what we want to know is manual drawings help to intuit, to find within us something that makes sense from our body and from the whole of our being, not just from our mind, on top of our mind. It's not tables. It's not listing down pros and cons. It's not a checklist. It's actually understanding the context, the whole whole thing, a variety of factors and not just one thing. It is not satisfying to feel the product at the end or the design at the end, or the built form at the end. Um, You know, 
feeling is out of sorts or feeling that oh, something is not really right here. But there are many places like that. We know that you can put in some plants or something to embellish it, but there is something that doesn't resonate in in you that the place is complete. It can be imperfect, but it's complete. So, yeah, what, that's why we call architecture the humanities, to do with the human being. Yeah? Uh, more and more people get excited. I'm just going to interject about architecture education. I can see from connections in LinkedIn, for example, someone from the building surveying department or the quantitative surveying department, an academic friend, nothing against him or her, but they would get excited about sustainability, teaching sustainability and all that. But where do they come from? They're not designers. They're not a creator. They're excited about technology. And architects get excited about technology, you know. Um, and look at architecture like other professions, losing out on their sense of humanities. So that's why I get to want to talk about this because it is important to reveal this, shall we say, insight, or shall we say, observation, more likely, observing through the years of how architects get excited with technology just like a building surveyor does. But architects don't get excited anymore with theory, with the sense of spatial experience and connecting with the human being in terms of scale and proportion. Architects are just after the next gleaming equipment. So you lose out. Where is the architect and all this? That's when the architect disappear. That's when the architect cannot lead because they're no more the creator. They don't sharpen their creative will, their creative power the creative dream of how it could be that no other profession can do. May it be an engineer or a surveyor. I see that testimony when I look at the Department of Architecture in a faculty, especially when you have to share the faculty with the other departments. When the architects are not protecting the most important thing, and when they do protect the design course with the loads of credits in it, like if you have an 18 credit course in a semester for the second year, eight of it, or even 10 of it, the majority of it is design. But what's in there? What is design? What's the design course? What's it emphasize on? In the last uh, episode, I mentioned about the skill of being able to see the whole thing, the bigger picture, and at the same time, the, the, uh, the details. Be able to see strategically and tactically at the same time. Be able to um, being aware of a lot of things at the same time and putting things together be able to create and able to understand the meaning of creativity, to understand, to able to, to design is something different than any other skills. And how do you come to that ability or the product is true asking the right question. And the training starts in the first year, right up to the fifth year, and remember that the problems become more varied, more complicated compared to the first year. Maybe the uh, lecturer resolve more things so that the first year student just deal with one thing. And then when it becomes more about 
the mind has to be more critical and understand to ask the right question. Then you have that skill, that skill of critique, architectural critique. That is lost in architecture school. Because during the presentation, what is asked is pretty drawings. It's wow drawings. It's drawings that is bombastic, fantastic. It's just drawings that have all sorts of loveliness. But when you look at a plan in the section, it may not work as what we go back to the scale and proportion of things. So what happened? Let's apply the first principle or the first thing that the architecture school did not teach, asking the right questions. During the design process, when the student of architecture did not ask the right question with regard to, to what actually goes on, what should you want the outcome of it and stuff, the plan and the section is not what they're concerned about. It's the embellishment outside, the aesthetics, how it, uh, you know, when, when one thing is being harped upon by the tutor, how does it look from this angle? How does it look from that angle? You know, or what materials are using before asking about what space, what's the function and the form in terms of the spatial volume and details inside done through plan and section. They ask about how's the look outside? What's your perspective? Where is this and where is that? So the students are not allowed to ask the right question. So the second thing now, what architecture is not teaching is not teaching the importance of drawing manually. Architecture schools think, or people in architecture school thinks that, okay, the students, well, you know, only one thing they're thinking of. They don't think about holistically the student's confidence when they become a project architect three years after graduation, how they could um, be confident of what they're doing. They don't think about that. They're thinking about um, the way the question is, the tutor is asking, oh, we got to make them um, be... Um, do computers as soon as possible. Yeah, just let them come in and start doing computers. Don't have to do manual drawings. There was even a debate of that manner. Okay, I'm not telling you who and what, but, you know, who and when, but that was in a curriculum review. And that is, shall I say, ignorant, selfish, and uncalled for. So it's not as well uncalled for meanings it's not informed discussion. It is, um, shall we say, um, diabolical, uh, meaning that it's just to throw you off the discussion, you introduce that and try to go and sit on it and defend it for the sake of ego. So that is wrong, you know, in, uh, in devising the curriculum. It is not informed, not researched, not thoroughly thought of. Don't allow that sort of discussion like, oh, because it's now everything is computerized, architects have to be compu can use computers right from the word go when they step into architectural school. I had architects uh, or graduate, well, they were in the fifth year at that time coming from another school that sit adamantly, no, I do not want to do manual drawings. That's because they never were taught manual drawings when they were in, in the previous school. So I was kind of like, why, you know? And um, they want to hide behind their weaknesses. And, okay, we go along with them hiding behind their weaknesses, but they will be find, found out later. I wonder where that that person is, whether they are doing design still, whether they can do design, whether they're confident at all. Perhaps they're confident at talking and having the computer designed for them, but not them as a proper designer, as someone who really is an architect. You can call yourself an architect with your professional qualification, but you, if you can't design, if you can't design properly, you're not one. I mean, the, the point is, you're not from the humanities. 
you're a pseudo architect. You're from the engin- engineering. Are you from surveying? Yes, you're one of those who get get oh, you know, excited about oh, what's the latest technology or newfangled things. No, you talk about the smartphone, yeah. The smartphone that you're holding now, or here, or or using now to listen to this podcast. That smartphone has been designed with a lot of considerations for ease of use. Even that, it it is not friendly to some people who may get a bad back out of it, shoulder ache, because it's addict, addictive. Now, this is a, an object that is not architecture, obviously. It's just one thing, and the intellectual property is encapsulate in one device but for architecture you have a lot of intellectual properties maybe the uh, light switches or the refrigerator mechanism inside of it or that is a creator's property somewhere which you need to get it legally um, contracted so that you can use those intellectual property but in architecture there's so many things combined together so you can't really um call it your design, but you're putting things together. So the ability to put things together, yet creating architecture that is what, you know, the user who is in a living in a house, they can redesign it however they want from the original creator. But the, the, the creator that did some, that, that does something that like a museum or a gallery or a school or hospital or a public building would be more of the real author of it. And, and how much of their input in there to create to create delightful spaces and spaces that can provide for some engagement um, some engagement by the human being with the environment and um yes, the second um, thing here is. Architecture school did not teach you to design manually properly. Even more so, architecture school should protect that skill, not protect, to uphold that skill of being able to manually draw um, properly. I've been to a school called uh, FAUP. Uh, it's the Portuguese acronym of the School of Architecture of Porto and the influence by Alvaro Cesar and a few other known architects, Demura, yeah, and some more. But they are tutors there and they uphold that principle very much and the ability to manually draw uh, uh, and upheld from the first year, the second year, right to the third year then you can start with the computer drawings in the fourth year or the fifth year as their computer drawings are different than the ones that i've seen in schools of architecture that starts them in the second year they recognize themselves as architect 100 percent or almost 100 percent of the non-english speaking portuguese architects from that school can be employed, and as you know, Portug- Portugal is not really, uh, shall we say, give you a high income for the architect or good income enough, but uh, they need to go to other places such as in the UK, and many of the Portuguese architects from that school are employed in Europe, including the UK and elsewhere. So you can see clearly the evidence from a school from that example. You can take my word for it, or you can investigate yourself with regards to schools of architecture. I mean, there's a lot of research to be done to prove that, obviously. And I only have my observation and my understanding personally of what goes on in the design process and to see the evidence of people solely letting the computer draw for them and not really massaging the plans, developing it. Only when you have the final plan, which you want to make it up there on the walls, 
presented, only you develop to the extent where you are prepared to do the production drawing with the computer, do you stop drawing manually because you want to present in it uh, in the computer, a uh, true computer drawings. Only then. And that's a fact. That's another fact and something which I like um, the listeners out there to think again. What are we losing when we lose manual drawing skills in schools of architecture? The ability not to be able to defend our profession as well. I mean, we're just like any other, excited with a newfangled technology or sustainability ideas, but not able to design properly. So you need to bash it out, bash out a good design, bash out the sense of scale and proportions. I know of a, uh, shall I say, in the early years of the 1990s, I know of a company that would have a huge set of Frank Lloyd Wright um, monographs or books to, to look at the proportions and scale. But it's fine if you're doing it manually. You can follow your um, the precedence and the models that you think have those scale and proportions in the sense of uh, the scale order and shall I say human scale that's fine you know you but draw it manually first rather than draw it quickly before it's even get to a point where it's done well um, and even in detailed design uh, to go into the computer drawing don't let the computer design for you because you lose that you lose architecture you lose that sense and sensibilities of architecture design. 